going on everybody so today we're going to do a video on a dd13 i have a fuel leak on the rail the common rail that goes across that distributes the fuel to each injector uh it's it's either going to be a fuel line issue but it's not in this case i'm going to show you why it's actually going to be the rail itself so these are the parts we are going to use this is the fuel rail this is again for a dd13 dd15 i think uses a different part number these are the fuel lines i'm going to put them new uh, again you're going to need three of this part number you're going to need three for this part number and of course you're going to need the fuel lines that come from the high pressure pump up to the actual rail itself the lines are one and done so if you take them off throw them away do not reuse them okay that's what the book says that's what i do with every single one that i do okay it doesn't matter if it's a line it doesn't matter if it's the high pressure lines always one and done again these are the parts you're going to need the tools, I'm going to show you the tools we use for this particular one. You're going to need a couple sockets, uh, a couple tools just to kind of get in there. I'm going to show you which ones yeah, they are. These are the tools that you're going to need. This allows you to get through the line. Again, the line itself is going to actually feed through there. This works pretty good when you are actually tightening things down. It doesn't work really well when you're actually going to loosen it up. So it's going to be a 19, so a metric 9 mil. There's the part number. It's a snap-on. I'm sure you can maybe fabricate or get something else that's going to be a little different for you. I also use this tool. This one actually works really well, especially when you are removing the line. Okay. I've noticed that this particular one, when you're removing, this actually flares open and it doesn't do the job right. So you end up buying this one, also made by Snap-on, I think. Let me see. Uh, yeah, there we go. There's the part number. And it's the same size, so it's still going to be a 19, and it's actually made a lot better. It does require a half-inch ratchet, and this will work with the 3.8. So again, this is good for tightening, and this is good for loosening. Okay, and again, everything is going to get torqued down. I'm going to try and show as much as I can in the video, but I certainly want to show you guys exactly the fuel leak I'm talking about. So let's get the truck up front. Let's take a look. And here's we'll take a look. Here is our new rail system, our new common rail that we're going to go ahead and install. Nice little rail comes with your seals, but these kits also come with the lines and the seals. So you're going to have some extra parts, no big deal. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to install these first. Again, I don't always install it, uh, torque them down. I kind of just run them down with my fingers, make sure they're in their spot, they have a little bit of play, and that way when I install the lines, they can move around depending on what you know what needs to happen. And then after that, I go ahead and torque everything down, blah, 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 blah. So again, first thing we're gonna do is install these seals. I cleaned everything up on the side of the rocker housing. We're gonna go ahead and then install this. And again, we're gonna leave it loose, so that way in case we need to just kind of clock it one way or the other, once we do that, we get the lines in and then we secure everything and we're ready to go from there. Okay, we are gonna prime the fuel system. Again, didn't bring the GoPro, so it's a bit of an epic fail on my part, but I'm gonna show you what you can do either way. Okay guys, and here you're gonna see the actual leak at the common rail and not at the high pressure line. So keep in mind, if it were the line, the pressure would be a lot more. I believe you're gonna get fuel streaming out of there, literally just spraying out of there at a high rate, high velocity. Uh, in this case, that's not what we have. What you're gonna to wanna to do is look at your supports. Some of these get loose. Uh, none of these actually appear to be loose at all. Okay, there's only three of them. So you have one in the middle, sorry, you got one in the middle, right, and on the left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get everything out of the way. I've done this before on my other videos. Again, get all this out of your way. It makes it a lot easier to work on it. And, and there we go. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So again, we we'll solved the leak, and now it's time to take things apart and get things replaced. So we're gonna replace the f uh, fuel rail and everything else. Okay guys, so we have all the accessories off, uh, air filter, the visor that goes on top, all the things that are gonna get in my way. Now you don't have to do this, but again, it makes it a lot easier for me. It really doesn't take that long to get all these things out, okay? You're probably looking at maybe a good 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, let's just say 30 minutes. And then at that point, you can start taking everything else out, which is gonna be your rail, your fuel, or your fuel lines, your rail, your fuel lines that go from the pump up to the common rail, okay? And again, the reason I do that is because when I install this, I wanna make sure my lines are straight. I wanna make sure they line up directly with, where are we at? There we go, with the injectors. And I wanna make sure that just everything goes the way it should, okay? Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is while we are here, we're gonna inspect the lines, okay? This is a real common problem on DD15s, uh, DD13s, the whole DD series. So inside, this is your harness, your injector harness, right? You've got the front and the back. Get your finger, doesn't really, take a look. You can see it for yourself. 
got a little bit of oil in there. Okay, I did run my fingers in there earlier. Uh, you shouldn't have any, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the harness just to go with it. It's not that expensive. Again, you've got uh, your front harness, you've got your rear harness, and we're just gonna get that done while we are here. So it's up to you if you wanna do that. If you don't have any issues, well then, you know, keep going. You know, you don't have to worry about anything else. So again, we had a little bit of oil. I did wipe it down, but in this case, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and get this done and taken care of. Because again, eventually this oil will contaminate your main harness and create other problems. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and start disconnecting everything. Before you do all this, make sure you disconnect your batteries and go from there. Okay guys, so we have the fuel rail off. Now, the fuel rail off. Now, I do apologize, I did not get to record that because again, I don't have my GoPro with me. So you're gonna take the line off. You're gonna see that there's only three points of contact. One, two, three on the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the line. We're not gonna completely tighten it down. We're gonna leave it loose in case we need to swivel because again, we're gonna install the new lines going in, okay? And just so that everything lines up, we're gonna line everything, we're gonna install each line. Once we have everything and we tighten down the lines or we feel the lines are where they need to be, then we're going, we're, we are going to go ahead and tighten down our fuel rail, okay? Now it is gonna be torqued down. I'm gonna show you what the book says on that really quick. And that's pretty much it. So it's actually a job that's not that complicated. It's something you can probably knock out uh, a couple hours. I'm guessing anywhere between five to six hours, maybe a little bit less than that, depending on what, uh, what your skills are. But again, rails off, lines are off. We're gonna install everything brand new as it should be. And we're gonna go from there, guys. So, okay, so what you're gonna go. wanna do, and this is just what, the way I do it, is you're gonna install your seals. Makes it a lot easier. You can still do it with the line. It doesn't really matter. Right now, Chavo's gonna go ahead and help me install the line. We're gonna go ahead and just, again, secure it lightly. And that way we can rotate it or clock, clock it depending on what we need. There's only one way to install it. You can't mess it up. I mean, I'm sure you probably could, but again, install it the right way and we will go from there. So again, get your seals in. We're gonna leave that one last because the fuel line does butt up a little bit here with the coolant module or the housing. And uh, that's it. So let's get it installed. And again, I'll show you guys little by little. Alrighty, fuel rail. So now we're gonna present the fuel rail here. It, actually, luckily it has the, the marks on there. So it's gonna help us line it up just a bit. Either way, I'm still not gonna run it down super tight because I still have to install the fuel lines. So I wanna make sure my lines are gonna line up first, then everything else should follow nicely. So these, again, run them down with your fingers. Do not use any power tools. I don't recommend it anyway. If you do, well, that's up to you guys, or that's up to you in general. So again, I'm gonna leave it loose just a bit, so this way if I need to go up and down, or I need to slide it forward or slide it back, depending on what's you know, what's going on with the rail system. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, these do have a little arrow pointing up. So there you go, arrow up. All right, so there we go, nice and snug. Still gives me a little bit of wiggle room to go up and down or front to back, depending on what's gonna happen. So. I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna keep working. Okay guys, so again, just simply run it down with your fingers, get it down finger tight. Just snug it up. Again, give yourself enough room so that if you need to move it around, you still have some of that, some of that play, okay? I installed the seals up underneath, all of them except for the one up in the front, because again, this will butt up. So what I'm gonna do is actually install the seal with the line at the same time. It's gonna run through. Once I do that, I'll put my two little bolts on the side. You don't have to completely, you don't completely have to tighten it down. Again, snug it, get the lines. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna connect all six lines, make sure we're happy and we're satisfied with the way everything sits. Once we do that, we'll, tor we'll torque everything down, torque everything down on the lines, on the rail, and we will go from there, okay? So these are the two lines. Again, there is one ending in 1810 and there's one ending in 1710. So depending on what I consider forward facing, right? So three, two, one injectors or four, five, six injectors. So let's figure that out and we will go from there. Now they do come with different covers. One has a little white jacket and this one I believe will have an orange jacket. And that's how you actually distinguish, or it'll help you distinguish which one is forward and which one is rear. I think the white, goes forward, okay? 
and the orange is what's gonna go towards the rear, okay? So again, four, five, six, three, two, one, one, two, three, whatever. Okay, guys, so okay. ra the rail is in, there's, again, only one way it's gonna go, and this is what I'm talking about. If you need to actually clock it just a little bit, I would leave it loose. These are the saddles that are gonna hold it in place. There are three. Keep in mind, there is an arrow right there, so it's gonna tell you, arrow up, that's it. Pretty simple. So again, you got two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom, that's gonna hold that saddle into place. It's a 10 mil. Uh, again, it is gonna be torqued down. I'm gonna show you what the book says on that. I imagine it's probably gonna be about 20, maybe 22 foot pounds, 25. Uh, I could be wrong on that. But again, that's all you're gonna do is you're gonna do that for the middle, for the left, and for the right. Once you do that again, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna install the lines. So that way it helps center the rail. So you have some play. I mean, if you can notice, you can go a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit up, a little bit down. Again, this plays a factor in it, so you're gonna slide accordingly, okay? So let's get the let's get this all kind of tucked in. I'm gonna show you the book and we're gonna go from there. All right, guys, so there we go. Fuel installation of the fuel rail system three filter. I don't know why the camera is not really focusing. There we go. So if you're gonna look at that, the clamps, okay? A, fuel rail clamp bolts. I was wrong, I thought it was 22. It's only 10 foot pounds, so it's not very much. I'm sure if you go a little bit higher, maybe 12, 15, I think you'll be okay. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna break anything. Uh, your injector lines, those are 30 foot pounds. Your banjo bolt, okay, that's important because you're gonna need new crush washers or seals. That only goes to 26 foot pounds. And that's it. Once you do that, you torque everything down. We're gonna pressurize the fuel system and we're gonna start it up. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys, if you, if you notice, everything's all set and ready to go. Tony's already got a few of these lines installed. Sorry for the camera, it's all over the place. But again, there you go, just to give an idea of what's going on. So we've got most of the lines installed. Once we got everything and we feel comfortable with it, we're gonna torque everything down. Again, fuel lines are 30 pounds. The fuel rail clamps, those are only at 10 pounds. I'm gonna go a little higher. Again, I'm not gonna go crazy on it, but just to give you an idea of what we're gonna do, okay? And the banjo bolt, that's 26 pounds. Uh, don't forget, replace these little crush washers, okay? Very important. Last thing you wanna do is do all this work and then this thing starts to leak on you. So, almost done. Once we have it all torqued down, we're gonna install the last lines, which or the last two lines which come off the high pressure pump up to the rail, very important. Do not use the old ones. Those are one and done. So all set. So let's keep going and we'll, we'll go from there, guys.